Uh, now, Elon recently wa was in Shanghai for an event um, where he kind of sealed the deal on their new factory. Uh, and so uh, let me just give you the, the, the short you know, bits about this real quick. Um, and that is that uh, the, the, he was there last Tuesday for an event in Shanghai, which is kind of like, as I've been told, the, the Silicon Valley of, of China. It's like a very tech, you know, very modern place. Uh, I would love to go someday, but but not not yet. Um, now, he, he sealed the deal to, to make a, a factory in China, which is wholly owned. There doesn't have to be a shared ownership. There's no forced IP transfer or any, any of that nonsense. Um, and uh, they are going to uh, aim to make 500,000 cars uh, out of that factory alone. Now, the Gigafactories here, the current setup is, you know, you make all the batteries at the Gigafactory 1, which is uh, in Sparks, Nevada, which is near Reno. And then you ship all the the, the powertrains um, and the battery packs over to Fremont, where the cars are, you know, go through general assembly. Um, and so these new ones, the new design is that all the raw materials are coming in, the aluminum, uh, the, the, the lithium for the batteries and all these kind of things. They're all assembled and made there and then out on the other end come cars. So they will make a, a, a complete product essentially. Um, now I'll read you the little bit here. So um, th this is from Bloomberg. They said, Elon Musk sealed a crucial agreement Tuesday to start building its second car assembly plant in the world. Construction will begin soon after approvals and permits are secured. Uh, I'm not sure how soon I, I, I believe that, but okay. Um, and the first vehicles will roll off the line within roughly two years, a Tesla spokesman said in an email. It'll take another two to three years for the factory to reach its capacity uh, and to build around 500,000 vehicles annually. Okay. So we have some data here and we have some production numbers. We have some stuff that is seriously going to impact uh, Tesla and figure out, um, or that, that, that can really kind of shape the future of the company. So uh, here's what I did. Uh, I took a look at the Tesla Model 3 production ramp, and this is using a log growth curve, which is what they've stated uh, is, is how this works or how the manufacturing process works. I plugged in their numbers. Um, I, this isn't this example right here, but you can adjust this. It's on the website if you want to go check it out. Um, and then I've taken those numbers. I've added them to the actual uh, production that we know of, the actual production that they've reported. Um, I've forecasted that out, and then I've thrown in the China plant. So I have some data here. So I have these forecast details, uh, which are the three production, which is there's actuals and, the, and then projections. I've capped the SNX production at 2,000 per week because that's what they said they're at now, and I believe they've stated they really don't think they'll be able to push more out of the kind of the one line at Fremont for that. Um, and then I built the, the China forecast um, and I, I threw that all together here. So I have some data um, that, that I pulled together to see what this Chinese factory uh, will likely uh, mean for Tesla and kind of the, the impact um, that, that it could have. So starting out, we have the current Tesla production ramp. This is without, without the China plant. So you can kind of see um, how that's grown over the years. Uh, and then now 2018 with the Model 3, uh, just absolutely ballooning. Um, you can see this this kind of hockey stick curve. And then from there, you know, it, it'll it'll top out essentially. Like without a new plant, and we don't have, have any official word on another new plant other than the China one right now, uh, I'm capping them at around 104,000 uh, cars per month um, is what we're, I think this actually might be quarter. No, this is per quarter. Um, so the label's wrong there, but you can see, so 104,000 cars per quarter. That's just with Fremont. This is without the China plant. Then um, I use that same log growth curve to try to predict what the uh, China plant growth may look like, assuming that, that it goes through a, a similar ramp. Um, and, and when it does that, uh, you know, it, it's, it's really difficult to predict because obviously you have different working conditions. Um, you know, there's probably, a, it's probably maybe just a perception, but maybe a fair assumption that uh, in China, they're better at manufacturing things than we are in the US. So maybe this will, it'll grow faster. So you can kind of see what I did is I used that same log growth curve that I used for the Model 3 ramp to predict uh, what would happen in China. And I'm starting in January of 2020, assuming that they would make a thousand cars by then, uh, which is, you know, roughly two years. Uh, and, and then, you know, going two years out that they would make 5,000. Maybe that's a bit aggressive 
aggressive. Maybe it's not. And I'm putting them at a peak of, of uh, 6,000 cars uh, per week is what these are predicting. So that that's where I got the, the China ramp data from. I didn't just fabricate it and you know throw numbers at the wall. I used some logic and some math and some historical stuff, which is you know, generally how we predict things. Um, then I added all that together into this chart here. Um, and you can kind of see where, uh, where, you know, the shift happens. So the model three ramp picks up and then with model three at 5,000 or 6,000 a week, uh, S and X at 2,000 a week, they're pretty much capped. And then you add in the China plant in two years and you can see again, it, it starts to rise, um, putting them at close to uh, 200,000 cars a quarter. Now this, still doesn't jive with what Elon uh, said back in 2016, was October of 2016, when Elon told analysts this spring that the Palo Alto-based automaker hopes to ramp up annual production to 500,000 vehicles in 2018. Not going to happen. And build 1 million vehicles by the end of 2020. Even with my projections here, assuming they were 100% accurate, you're still well shy of that. Um, the paper added the 2018 goal alone is nearly a tenfold increase from the 50,580 vehicles that Tesla produced last year in Fremont. That would be 2015. The automaker has forecast this year deliveries at 80 to 90,000. Quality problems and production delays plagued the plant early this year and threatened sales plans. Again, that's kind of a, a running theme with them. But the company said last week that those problems are behind it and that expects to come close to its forecast in 2016. Okay, so so Elon thinks that they can get there um, to a million cars. I mean, this, you know, I'm curious what his thinking is now. Uh, I still just, I, I don't see it, it happening. Um, I, I don't see them getting to, I don't see them getting to a million cars with just the China plant, um, unless it's a much bigger plant than, uh, than, than maybe, you know, they're anticipating. Uh, but, you know, that's still several years away. They said two to three years after it begins production, which will be in roughly two years. We're talking five, six, maybe seven years from now. Um, far later than the 2020 deadline the, or, uh, uh, prediction that, that Elon said uh, a couple of years ago. So I'm still optimistic that they're going to open a new plant, uh, another plant in North America, um, and probably one in Europe. We've heard some some little rumblings about that as well. So so potentially something in Europe. Um, and, and, and so more to come. Um, but right now, I think uh, they're, they're doing extremely well and things are, uh, you know, uh, uh, growing. And so, you know, all signs go, things are going well uh, for them. And this is just one a new big step uh, towards their goal of kind of like really becoming a, a major automaker in the world. So there you have it. Um, curious what you guys think. Let me know on Twitter, on Facebook. Hit me up. Send me your, your thoughts.